And if they described their homes as cluttered, they had an elevated cortisol level, which is your stress Mm -hmm. hormone, continually elevated. It just didn't go down. You're listening to the Mindful Mama podcast, episode number 255. Today, we're talking about how to declutter for the new year with Katie Wells. Welcome to the Mindful Mama podcast, now with over a million downloads. Here, it's about becoming a less irritable, more joyful parent. At Mindful Mama, we know that you cannot give what you do not have. And when you have calm and peace within, then you can give it to your children. I'm your host, Hunter Clark Fields, Mindful Mama Mentor. I help smart, thoughtful parents stay calm so they can have strong, connected relationships with their children. I've been practicing mindfulness for over 20 years. I'm the creator of Mindful Parenting, and I'm the author of Raising Good Humans, a mindful guide to breaking the cycle of reactive parenting and raising kind, confident kids. Welcome back, my friend. It's so great to be in your ears as always, and a big, big welcome to you if you are new to the Mindful Mama podcast. This is a great episode to dive into. In just a moment, I'm going to be sitting down with Katie Wells. As she's a declutter expert and host of the Maximized Minimalist podcast. She helps women turn their home from stressful to restful without being overwhelmed. And we're going to talk about how to declutter for the new year. And I don't know about you, like with the whole pandemic, I can't, well, I'm not going to any parties. I'm not visiting family. I'm not going to any choral events. <laughs> None of that is happening for me this year. So we're kind of focusing on our home. We're just making it cozy and we are doing some decluttering, maybe a bit of it inspired by this this episode. But yeah, it just kind of making our home more simple and beautiful and easier to be in, you know, a little nesting. And so if you are wanting to declutter for the new year, this is the episode for you, especially if you have kids, of course. And you know, clutter causes us stress, it costs us money, it eats away our time. And so maybe this can be the new year that we clear away the clutter and create a simpler, more joyful environment. And we talk about some ways to do that. I talk about those ways with Katie. And so we, and some important takeaways that I want you to listen for in this conversation, how kids' attitude, behavior, and sleep habits can improve with a decluttered environment, how our brains register clutter as unfinished work, which elevates stress levels, And we're going to talk about some surprising items that can make your home feel more cluttered that you can get rid of right away. So I know that you are going to love this episode. I think I have time to announce we have just a couple days left for enrollment for the 2021 class of the Mindful Parenting Teacher Training. If you are interested in that, you can go to mindfulparentingcourse.com slash teach. That's mindfulparentingcourse.com slash teach and schedule a quick call for me to see if you are a right fit for the program. And uh, we start now, we start right away because you may have to go through mindful parenting if you have, have learned some other modalities and learned things from all different places. So you may have to go through mindful parenting yourself and then we will get started in February. So check that out, mindfulparentingcourse.com slash teach. And before we dive in, I want to give a big shout out to Hollywood Yogi for the five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Yay, thank you so much. And thank you to your friend Lorraine who turned you on to this beautiful podcast. And so she wrote a beautiful, inspiring review that makes me feel so good. Thank you so very much. And now join me at the table as I talk to Katie Wells. Katie, thanks so much for coming on the Mindful Mama podcast. Thanks for having me. I'm glad to talk to you because I, okay, so I have a relationship with clutter and stuff in that um, I've done a lot of decluttering. I believe in it. I think it's important to simplify. I've done a lot of simplifying, even though I've like come from like kind of a more of a uh, eclectic clutter kind of family. My husband's like kind of like a Zen guy. So he really likes that. So we've come together, but this year, (laughs) I think I'm not alone that with the pandemic, there has definitely been a little bit of retail therapy happening in my home. And, um, and I'm, there's, you know, it just feels like things are sort of like creeping, creeping in. And it, 
it, anyway, uh, so I'm excited to talk to you about declaring. <laughs> All to say that. Yes. Well, you know, I can't wait to dive in because, um, you know, and this will come up too. It's just, it really shook me. And it's still, if I really look back at my life pre-decluttering, I had no clue how it would impact my life, how it would impact my motherhood, my relationship with my husband, my kids, my relationship with my own self, um, my self-awareness. I mean, my mental health, my, you know, just spiritual, all these different things and kind of levels within me have shifted in such positive ways. Um, and I really just set out to declutter because I was stressed out and sick of the mess. <laughs> and just the byproduct of being able to let go has just been such a beautiful thing for me and my family. And so I'm always happy to talk about clutter. <laughs> yay. Yay. So, so this is like, that's awesome. That's been like, had all these amazing effects on you. So let's take us back to your story. Cause you, you were not so, uh, a, a minimalist or a, a simplifier not too long ago. You were, you were more of a like Amazon packages coming to the house kind of, kind of oh, yes. at some point, right? I, w I hid, I did an effort to hide all the Amazon boxes that oh. hit my doorstep on an almost <laughs> daily basis. And I was an absolute anthropology addict. I was always um, trying to cope with stress and anxiety with, you know, hopping on my phone like a lot of people do. Um, and, you know, getting that short, but honestly, very expensive dopamine hit, um, just day after day after day. That's just, I think how a lot of people cope. And it's just like you said, with this year, I even noticed my, noticed myself wanting to kind of what I call revert back to Katie 1.0 pre decluttering and pre minimalism, which was, I, I feel like I need to buy something to get through this uncomfortable, you know, emotion or feeling. Whereas now typically I have found other outlets that don't involve, you know, spending money or bringing stuff in. So that's been good. But yeah, it's been, um, it's been, it's been a journey for sure. So yeah. And then this, we can definitely identify shopping as that like shopping. Well, it's like, it's a bunch of things. Cause it almost is kind of like, it's almost like eating, right? Like in that we do actually kind of need some goods and services to yes. like get along in the world, right? Like we can't just like, I mean, we could be a hermit, I suppose, if we wanted to, but <laughs> uh, we're not gonna, right? So we, we do, and, and you know, with food, we, we obviously need to get it all the time. And, and, and so we do need goods and services. Our kids need clothes as they grow and, and mm -hmm. we, you know, it's okay for us to get stuff sometimes, right? We want to look and feel good and, and it, we don't want to be depriving ourselves. So there's that, that aspect in that, but that, uh, as it goes towards more and more and more, it, we are doing it to numb our feelings. Like where we're having an uncomfortable feeling, where life isn't feeling good and we're we're actually just kind of looking for that like quick feel good pick me up kind of thing that my great new gray leather jacket from um from yes. has just given me yeah and you know and here's the thing it's not like a bad thing or it's not like if i shop now which i still shop it's not like i don't get that dopamine hit too but when it comes to you know a mindful, right? You're all about being mindful, a mindful shopping experience or a mindful purchase versus, you know, and the majority of my purchases were just impulse and just like a coping mechanism, like we talked about. So really shifting that over the years has just also been a, a wonderful, a wonderful way to not bring more clutter back in. So did you have a turning point? Did you have a point where you're yeah. like, OMG, you know, did your husband like open up the closet and find all the Amazon or the anthropology packages? Like what, what was that turning point and shift for you? I wish it was something that <laughs> um, hilarious, like, oh, my, my husband just found 50 Amazon boxes in my uh, closet. But we actually, uh, we had a really uh, life altering car accident just over three years ago. And so in 2017, my husband and my kids and I, uh, my kids were one and two and a half at the time, um, hopped in our minivan. We were like, you know, like a lot of parents, just we, Andrew and I both worked full time, both overworked, overstressed people and human beings. And then you add poopy diapers and young kids into the mix. It's just, you know, it's, it's life. And so we said, let's go, let's go take a family day. It's Friday. It was Black Friday. We hopped in the car and we went to go to the Biltmore. We were just talking about that. The Biltmore is in Asheville where I live. And literally two minutes after we left our house, we got hit head on um, on our road. And my husband broke his neck. 
in three spots. Uh, he broke his shoulder. He, I mean, he literally came millimeters from losing his life. And just the entire experience of that car accident was so traumatic. Um, luckily, my kids and I, we fared fine. Um, but for a long time, you know, for hours, what felt like eternity, I didn't know if my husband was going to survive that car accident. Mm. And so that was really, you know, the rock bottom of my what I already thought before that was a rock bottom. I was living every day like it was Groundhog Day. I woke up feeling behind before my feet even hit the floor. I was behind on laundry, on chores. I was, you know, like, like this is motherhood. This is not the motherhood I anticipated myself to have. That was, you know, cluttered countertops. Uh, you know, I was drowning in toy mess and baby gear and mail and paper clutter. And it was just so frustrating. And, um, I knew clutter before that car accident had been impacting me. I, I think I think most of us do. We recognize, yeah, I, I understand how the clutter's mess in my house is stressing me out. But it wasn't until after that car accident that was my kind of defining moment where I said, listen, if I take a step back and sit down and take a minute and look at my values, well, my values are, and at that time were, you know, connecting with my family. Connection is a big one for me and simplicity. But the choices I was making every day didn't reflect either of those, didn't reflect either of those. Um, and I knew I had to do something different. I couldn't continue living motherhood this way. I knew there had to be more than motherhood and just following around my toddlers, picking up after them. I wanted to be down on the floor with them. I wanted to play with them. I wanted to connect, but I, I noticed and I felt, and I was really resentful about the stuff, stealing my time and tension away from my kids, my husband, my own self. And um, that was really the defining moment where I said, enough's enough. Like now's the time. I need to make this a priority. Mm -hmm. Wow. I can't even imagine. My my mother broke her back in a horseback riding accident where she had to like be in a turtle oh my shell. You know, when I was a kid, like, you know, for a long time and she was like an inch away from being paralyzed. So that that whole, it really is like a wake up call to have scary. something uh, that scary happen to you. I, I, is your husband better now? I mean, obviously <laughs> he's like, uh, he's living and all that, but like, yes. I hope he's... He is, yeah, he's fully recovered. And actually one year to the day after he got neck surgery, he needed his neck fused. He ran a 50 mile ultra marathon because he's an ultra marathon runner at heart. Holy and so moly. that was how he celebrated <laughs> regaining wow. his health. So there's a happy ending on lots of different, you know, uh, you know, avenues of the story. So yeah, we're, we're very grateful. Wow. Rock on. Go him. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, so where did you start? I, I think like millions of people have, I hopped on Amazon and <laughs> said, okay, one of my last Amazon purchases before I try and really get better with impulse shopping is going to be Marie Kondo's book, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up. Um, so I started there and I tried implementing her methods. And while I literally thought this is a life-changing book, I remember reading it. I remember sitting, I know exactly where I was sitting, exactly how I felt digesting this information, going through her methods, going, yeah, dude, this all makes sense to me. And then trying to execute, you know, like, have you, you, you're probably aware, like, right. You pile up all the same category, you put it, you know, you get all the coats from the coat closet, the closets, the kid rooms, you put them all in a pile. Right. And then you go through them. And I tried executing a lot of these things that made sense to me, but I, as a busy mom working full time, I literally had maybe 10, 15 minutes before the baby woke up or before I needed to handle something. And I was just finding that a lot of these things I was trying to execute were take, I needed like five, six, seven hours of an oh, open yeah. window with no Definitely. kids, yeah. you know? And so I, I got, I gave up really fast. I honestly, I gave up within two weeks and ironically that book became clutter, right? It just sat on my nightstand and then every night I saw it and it made me mad because I was like, I can't even do this. I can't even, this is, gosh, Katie, you know? And so I kind of beat myself up. And then over time I was just, you know, again, because I was just so determined. I was like, I have to make this work. So I really spent two years making endless mistakes and, you know, working my way through it, all the roadblocks, all the emotions, all the this, that, and the other that stops so many women and men from kind of, you know, reclaiming their home and uh, kind of cracked the code over the years and then decided, oh my gosh, this changed everything for me. I need to 
share this with other people and started with the podcast and then gosh, the rest is history. Stay tuned for more Mindful Mama podcast right after this break. We have had some very picky eaters eating a lot of secret hidden vegetables and loving it because of our next sponsor, Little Spoon. Little Spoon has a simple mission, to make it easier for parents to keep their kids healthy without sacrificing the bank. Little Spoon's fresh baby food and kids meals are just like homemade, but without the hours spent in the kitchen, huge mess and expensive grocery store bill. You know, even though we are home constantly, like it feels like we are busier than ever. And you know what? Little Spoon gets it. They ship directly to your door with everything ready in just minutes. You can pop all their meals in the fridge or the freezer, whatever is easiest for you. There are two types of foods you can buy. Baby blends for early stage eater and the toddler and kids meals called plates. The baby blends are awesome because Little Spoon's baby blends are fresh, cold pressed and non-GMO project verified. Absolutely no preservatives, additives or anything you can't pronounce. They're made up of 100 plus organic ingredients featuring in a rotating menu of seasonal recipes designed alongside pediatricians and nutritionists. And the best part? It doesn't break the bank and there are no commitments. It's just $3 or less per meal. And for the plates, the toddlers and the big kids, and there are 15 different plates to choose from at any given time. And every recipe is packed with hidden organic veggies and superfoods to ensure your kid gets a balanced meal no matter what. And the best part, every single plate is under five bucks. Little Spoon has seriously nailed it. Ship to my door, under five bucks, no commitments and tons of options. And my kids love it. Not to mention their line of clean dipping sauces is also packed with hidden organic veggies and superfoods and they pair perfectly with every plate. What kid doesn't love to dip? Oh my goodness. So you should check them out absolutely. Go to littlespoon.com slash try slash hunter to get started and be sure to use our code hunter to get $15 off your first delivery. That's littlespoon.com slash try slash hunter and use that coupon code hunter to get 15 bucks off your first delivery that's cool i did i did also read uh the life-changing magic of tidying up and i did my clothes and i remember that yes. day where like i had all the clothes on the bed yes and i still fold in the way that i i think it's the way that she teaches you mm -hmm. for me i that folding is like I, I, I was always like the, a messy person and now I have my underwear folded in my drawer, which is so <laughs> crazy to think about, but, um, but I, I really enjoyed it, but you're right. Like, it's interesting. You know, I wonder if like maybe Marie Kondo's method, like m works better in like a tiny Japanese space, sure. <laughs> like where there's just American homes are just are a lot bigger. Like there's a yes. lot more maybe than, than they have in Japan. I'm not sure. Yeah. I always, um, yeah. And that's, that's what got me kind of got me on early on. I'm like, is it me or is it, I, I don't know. It just doesn't seem reasonable for a mom to spend, you know, I, I did my clothes the same way. And after that, I was like, I can't do this. I spent five hours. I was stressed out because the babies were crawling all over me, undoing my hard work. It was just, it was not a good, you know, scene. Um, and then, actually just about six, maybe seven months ago, I read a really interesting article. It was an interview with Marie Kondo and the journalist. Um, and she, she now has kids. So she wrote that book before she has, now she's got two young girls. Oh, Marie Kondo does? She does. And oh, she okay. said, I, now that I'm a parent, I, I don't even execute some of the methods that I teach in my book. It's just not sustainable for me with two young girls. And I was like, okay, good. It wasn't just me. <laughs> and then I, and another article I read, it was very fascinating to me because 97% of people um, they studied who read her book and started with her methods gave up after three to six months, they were done. The majority of that 97% um, gave up within the first two to four weeks, just like I did. They were just like, nope, like just for whatever reason, they didn't continue on. And I'm like, well, then 
gosh, there's got to be a reason. There's a, it's again, it's a beautiful book, well written. I love everything she has to say, but there's some type of disconnect if people aren't actually barely starting, let alone following through, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, all right. So, well, you you say you you cracked the code. So, <laughs> what what is what is a better method for tidying up than if if it's not Marie Kondo, get all the stuff together? Yeah. What what's a better way of doing it? I mean, for me, it did that really worked well for my clothes, but I'm not sure about yeah. everything else. I mean, I don't never pulled all of my kitchen items out of so that. Seems like frightening and sad and scary. <laughs> option. So I didn't do that. But what, what's a better way? I truly believe like one of the best things we can do if it's making, no matter like what change you want in life, like your podcast is all about like parenting, right? Like how to become a more mindful parent, like all these different values that are important to you and your listeners and any type of change that they want to make. It's so helpful to have support, motivation, community, accountability, right? To like, that's why people listen to this podcast, right? Or visit you on Instagram or watch uh, any stories you do, right? They know that Hunter is going to show up for them each and every day and give them these little bits of things that they can do. And it doesn't have to be such a black and white, like it's all or nothing. Like I have to be a minimalist or I have to be a hot mess mom, right? It's these little things we can decide each and every day that are going to help get us closer to an uncluttered home in the long run. So I'm much more about teaching my students and people who go through my programs about just sustainable habits that are quick, easy, actionable, and like they just stick with my people. And that's why I have such a great, uh, uh, just, I have insane reviews um, on my 14 day clutter challenge, for example. And it's just the results that people get. It's so much more than like, yes, you're going to declutter part of your home, but you're also going to have some type of life-changing shift in your thoughts and your beliefs. That's going to help you be able to sustain that. What are some of the best parts of the home to start with? I mean, for, for me, I was very inspired by Simplicity Parenting, Kim yeah, Kane. Same. He was on mm-hmm. the podcast, episode number 75 or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and, he, you know, it when I decluttered my kids' rooms and decluttered their toys and made a, I made a toy purgatory. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, they... It, I was so scared the first time when I was like, oh my God, I got rid of like 70% of her stuff. This is crazy. And my daughter came in and she was in preschool then and she was so happy and she yes. just stayed in there for like an hour and a half. I was like, oh my God, hallelujah. And she was so happy. Any mm-hmm. time I decluttered her room, um, it was really, really positive. And I was always like, a li- you know, especially the first couple of times I was a little bit scared, but I realized like, it just makes a, a, such a huge difference in, in being able to enjoy the environment and, and taking yeah. kids stress levels down. Like we don't realize like all this stuff we're giving them out of, out of the goodness of our heart because the grandparents love them and blah, blah, blah. It's actually creating a lot of stress in their lives. So for me, I started with the kids' toys and mm-hmm. that kind of their, their area because that was just the easiest place to start. Is, is that a place you recommend to start or do you think about other areas? Yeah, I think that's a great place to start, especially if that's a, you know, a recognized pain point for any of your listeners. Like if you're drowning in toy mess like I was and, you know, your kids might not be picking up after themselves. Maybe you're battling, trying to negotiate, bribe them to pick up after themselves, yet it all falls on your shoulders. I remember wasting, you know, the majority of my quote unquote free time uh, picking up toys. Uh, You know, I'd spent 20 minutes picking up toys so I could vacuum the floor and vacuuming took two minutes. I'm like, something's not right here. (laughs) So starting with toys is great. And yeah, I know I totally get it. I was fearful of letting go of some of my kids' toys too, although they were quite young. um, So they didn't quite understand the concept of decluttering, um, you know, and your daughter was in preschool. But I've, I've heard so many, including, uh, in um, Kim John Payne's book, um, one of the examples he used was a mom worked through, I think, about 70% of her daughter's room and decluttered it. And when her daughter got home, she was obsessed. She's like, I love my room. I love this. Thank you so much. And she just, her attitude changed, her behavior changed, her sleep patterns changed. And it was just, you know, I think a lot of us can understand how clutter impacts us, right? 
it on a physical level, physiological, mental level. And for whatever reason, I think there's a disconnect that it might affect kids, but um, I see it time and time again. And I know you did with your daughter and, you know, Kim John Payne as well. So did you, what did you do when, when you were in your, in your place of your massive decluttering, what did you do with all the toys? Oh, mo- what, what did you get rid of? <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, I don't even remember. I have, well, here's the thing. I have the uh, memory of a goldfish, but <laughs> I was also in that season where it's working full time. I, I just literally have no memory. It was I think one of those parts of life I just blocked out. <laughs> Honestly, it was just so painful. I was like, oh my gosh, the sleepless nights. The It was just a mess. Um, so I couldn't even tell you what I got rid of. Here's, what I tried to do was at the time, I was like, okay, I'll declutter some. And then I thought toy rotation is the answer. I kept seeing all these, you know, toy rotation is the answer. Uh, I failed miserably at that. That caused more stress than it helped. And so, again, it kind of just took a lot of tweaking and learning over time to see what worked for me, my family, versus going off of like, you know, a mommy blogger or, you know, some information I digested and thought it's kind of has to be this way or not this way, this way or the highway type thing. Um, But yeah, the toys are a completely different scenario now. My kids are now four and five years old. Our nightly cleanups, which I film and put on my Insta stories almost every night, get done in less than three minutes. I would say two minutes on average. Um, they love their toy space. They usually only have between six to eight toys out at a time. Um, and by toys, I mean like a doll and the accessories would count as one toy, not like each little mm-hmm. component. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but it's just, it's beautiful. In our home, I just, I, it's, our toy space is in the living room. So it's even more important for me visually and aesthetically for my mind to have it super simple. So again, it keeps things easy to clean up. My kids pick up after themselves with no issues. Um, and it's just, it's just honestly such a joy to be able to watch them. Um, their play change, their play change after I got rid of some of these toys, longer play, more meaningful play. Um, it, just imaginative play, things that um, I hadn't really been able to see before in them. And it's just, it's, it's been a really pleasure um, from a parent perspective to witness that in my kids. I would have to agree. I mean, when, as we simplified and got rid of the stuff, we had a very similar number of toys. Like we had like two shelves that were Mm -hmm. two and a half feet wide, right. That they, they could, you know, they were, the toys were evenly sort of like spaced out kind of Montessori style with, with um, space around them. And, um, and I remember putting out, you know, probably dear listener, you've heard me say this ridiculous number of times, but I remember thinking like the crunchy moms were like crazy that thinking that like, like play scarves or like these are lovely things. Oh yeah. Was like, <laughs> oh yeah. That's such BS. Yeah. But it tended, it was so true. And like, and it's true. Like as things got simpler and simpler, they use their imaginations more, mm-hmm. like they're more creative. Those play scarves were everything they became all of the different things like i remember my daughter's like making the play scarves into like a toy hospital and like cutting wow. open some of their toys and cutting out little hearts and like putting the hearts in the the stuffed animals and then sewing them back up again and like making <laughs> you know just like all these like crazy imaginative things i had to like lie down and get massaged which that was a real tough one right one, you know what i mean like <laughs> But it was like, uh, just because they were using all the stuff that was there. It, and it really was this like a very imaginative level of play. Um, it, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's awesome to see that. Stay tuned for more Mindful Mama podcast right after this break. We are supported by HelloFresh, where you can get fresh, pre-measured ingredients and mouth-watering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door with America's number one meal kit. HelloFresh lets you skip those trips to the grocery store and makes home cooking easy, fun, and affordable and super, super yummy. I loved this meal that we had with HelloFresh a few weeks ago. We had chicken sausage and sweet potato soup and my 13-year-old daughter made it. And we all loved it. It was so good. The whole family really, really loved it. HelloFresh, I have to say, started out as a sponsor. And now we are customers because the meals are so yummy. And it provides 
all a variety. We don't have to decide what we're cooking. It like takes that mental load away. And it's so, so delicious, like having a restaurant meal at home. I couldn't recommend HelloFresh more. It has made our pandemic eating so much better. HelloFresh is super convenient. It's ethically packed. You can choose these amazing, delicious meals each week. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Hunter80 and use the code Hunter80 to get $80 off, including free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash Hunter80 to get $80 off and free shipping. It is. It is. And then, you know, from just like, you know, just like real mom chat, like how nice is it to be able to cook dinner and not have your kids be like, I'm bored every two minutes, even though they have a bajillion toys, right? Like I don't, I remember like something about dinner time. Like I've heard some moms call it like the witching hour. It's like something shifts when you're cooking dinner, your kids, maybe you're hungry, low blood sugar or something. And it's just like a lot more whining. And so that really changed um, after I simplified their toys again, because they were just, they were into whatever they had out, right? The magnetiles or the little, a few trucks versus 80 different kinds of trucks and loud plastic things making noise and distracting them. And so um, just from that level, it's like, oh, it's such a relief to, you know, they can stay busy independently. I can join in on them, which I do often. But, you know, in a time where a lot of us don't have childcare, if your kids can stay busy longer and be happier and you can get maybe some work done from home, I mean, gosh, it's total game changer. And so, dear listener, it seems like it might be counterintuitive that like the less it you does. give them, <laughs> yes, the more, the longer, more creatively mm-hmm. they'll play. Like you, there might be a level of fear around that for you that like, yeah. oh my God, wait, you're saying I'm going to get rid of these toys and they're going to play longer and more creatively? Like, yeah, right. And, but it's, if you don't believe myself or Katie, like, give yourself a, make a little toy purgatory. So if they do it. To, if they and that could be, back, you can. that could be again, like if you, obviously I think you can play, your listeners can probably look at their, the toys and go, okay, clearly some of this needs to go. But then for maybe stuff, maybe that was like a higher price point or it was a gift, or you're just not sure. Like maybe the kids haven't touched it in a while. And you're like, I don't know. I'm not really quite confident to get rid of this. Like try to in toy rotation, put it away for two weeks and then pull it back out. And if the kids aren't excited to use it, that's a maybe a red flag that they've outgrown it. It's ready, you know, it's you can trade it in for something else, put it away for another few weeks, bring it back out. Again, if they're like not feeling it, I think that's a great sign. And it gives us more confidence as parents to kind of know what to let go of based on what our kids are into and their interests right now versus going, uh, I, I have no clue, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Test, test it out. Toy rotation worked really well for our, yeah. our family. It was like, couple few some in some out and then yeah it's all fresh again all right so toys are like an obviously great place to start mm-hmm. because just because it's so much easier when your kids can put away their own things you know only have them as much in what we talk about mindful parenting is only have as much out as your child can put away by themselves in five five Love minutes mm-hmm. and so that makes a huge difference in the amount of stress in your life and clearly and it really impacts kids and the stress in their lives. So that's a great place to start. So for, for parents who are saying, okay, like this is, we're going into the new year. I don't want to be stressed by like all these countertops that are covered with things, all the stuff coming in my house. Um, what are, what are some other places aside from toys that you recommend like uh, for like a new year, new intention, a, a way to start and to get a quick win might be? I, I used to say like bathroom, like start in your bathroom. There's no sentimental things in your bathroom. Um, but I think, I think for a lot of us to register a quick win, it's can be more beneficial if it's somewhere we spend a lot more of our time than Mm. the bathroom. So um, I might switch it up and tell your listeners to start with maybe a space that might be a little more intimidating, maybe a kitchen or living room, right? Even though it might feel a little daunting. Um, I really would just encourage them to um, do what I call clutter audits. So a clutter audit is basically when you incorporate decluttering into your normal everyday routine. So an example, as far as the kitchen goes, would be I uh, this morning I unloaded my dishwasher and I opened my silverware drawer to put my silverware away. So it's a great time to quickly scan your silverware drawer and go, do I have 50 forks? 
maybe. <laughs> do I only use 10 before I do the dishes? Like, let's get rid of 20. Let's simplify. Or maybe your kids have outgrown the plastic baby gear that's half melted and falling apart. Um, and just quickly sweeping this um, visual area you're looking at as you're putting things away. You know, the thing, you know, if you're doing, putting coffee mugs away, if you're Look, look, look in the back of your cabinet. If you haven't touched 10 of them in the back, two of them have chips on them. Two of them you hate because they don't fit your hand, right? Like that's a great time as we're just doing these normal everyday chores. And when you look at it like that versus like, oh gosh, I have to spend 10, 20, 30, 60 minutes this week decluttering. I don't know where to start. Um, it just helps remove some of the overwhelm out of it. And, you know, on the back end, it's about sustainable habits. So if you can do this every single day, it just becomes so automated. You don't have to think about it. It's just, hey, I'm putting the laundry away I'm, or I'm folding the laundry. And, you know, these two shirts right here that fit my four-year-old yesterday, he's outgrown because he's growing like a weed. I can go ahead and just let go of these right now. Just, I have a bin in my laundry room for that purpose because the kids, they grow so fast. So instead of putting it back in the drawer or being like, I don't know where to put this, it doesn't fit them, right? Kind of procrastinating. And then it just, it just, it sits there forever. I have a bin that's for clothes that need to be donated. Once that bin fills up, I put it in a bag and, you know, um, give it to another mom in town. So you're saying like always have an, like an outgoing bin kind of thing. Always, 100%. I have two. I have a small one in my laundry room because again, with kids growing in laundry, that seemed like a natural place to put it. And then I've got one kind of larger like garage size tote in my garage that um, the lid's off. I marked donate on it. I told my husband, hey, if you have anything you run into, you know, when you're getting dressed or doing chores yourself throw it in this bin. And it's, I look at it as truly, it's an invitation, right? To fill up. <laughs> and so to have something like that in place without um, having to think about it, definitely a secret weapon to getting more out of your house and keep and keeping up the habits, right? If you see it every day when you get out of your car or walk into whatever space you keep it in, it's a constant reminder. Hey, oh, when was the last time I did a clutter audit. When was the last time? Oh, you know what? I should probably go through the kids' clothes or there's some old shoes in the entryway that are two sizes too small. So it's, 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 it's awesome. We have an outgoing bin, but it's like kind of like near our door, which is like goes right into our living room. So almost like we get the clutter of like the stuff that's near in and around the outgoing yeah. basket, which is probably too small anyway. So you're making me think Katie about where, where else I could put my outgoing basket, yes. but give, a, give ourselves a little, a little more space. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, one of the things that our house is like on a slab, um, so we don't have a basement and we also don't have a um, attic. And so like our only storage space is like this kind of like smallish, the, the, the stairs go up to a small landing and then they turn and go upstairs. And, and under that small landing, there's like about a, oh, I don't know, it's like a four foot by four foot space. Like that's our entire storage space for like our whole house. And I've always been so grateful for that because I can't, I literally cannot keep random stuff, you know, like all of our Christmas right. has to like fit into this one bin and I can't keep the like snowman mugs that my mother-in-law gave me, you know, like I'm, I can't, I'm sorry. Thank you very much. I cannot keep those. <laughs> and I, I don't say that. I just say thank you very much. And then goodbye. And I put them in the bin, but um, yeah. Uh, so have a bin, always have an outgoing bin. And you were saying like kind of a quick win. I like the idea of like, uh, making, going to a kitchen or a living room somewhere where you're going to live in that space and, mm -hmm. and then you're going to have the benefit of, of that environment. And I think it's helpful to think about like, um, our environment in general, you know, like what, what is it, how, do, how does it affect us, et cetera, you know, when, I mean, when, when we think of, sometimes we just think about all the, the stuff in our lives and we think of these in general, I mean, it, it, this is kind of a strange modern problem we have, right? That we all have yeah. too much stuff. Like this is like yeah. obviously a privileged problem. Mm -hmm. It's a, a, a Western educated, mm -hmm. wealthy problem. And, um, and so generally in human history, like we've, we've wanted to hold on to things. We've wanted to value things, you know, so this is like a really brand new problem, but there's other, so we generally think about our stuff in this kind of like positive valuing way. Mm -hmm. um, 
but there's kind of like a dark side to all of our stuff. Like, can we talk about what are some of the problems with clutter and, and like what yeah. it does to our life a little bit? To, we're, we want to give you some, dear listeners, some inspo to, uh, to get, get rid of the clutter clutter here. (laughs) Yeah. Oh gosh, where do I start? Uh, Yeah. When I started recognizing again, kind of these unexpected side effects of, you know, since I began decluttering, I was like, I'm just going to look and see if anyone else has experienced like less anxiety. I did, again, I did not set out to declutter so I could have less anxiety. I am a person just like hundred percent transparency. I just, I, I have anxiety. And when I had a cluttered home, it was like tenfold. And then I was like, oh, there is such a thing tapped on Google, there's such a thing as clutter induced anxiety. And I started reading all these studies from like UCLA that if they interviewed, um, and they did this only with women, I don't know why. Oh no, they did it with men too. Um, But they interviewed men and women. And if they described their homes as cluttered, they had an elevated um, cortisol level, which is your stress Mm -hmm. hormone and uh, like continually elevated. It just didn't go down. So you don't have to be a health expert to know that high stress levels over time <laughs> lead to can lead to a lot of physical health issues, blood pressure, acne, fatigue, sleep issues. Gosh, I mean, look it up. It's insane. And then um, one of the most, I think, studies that, st- uh, articles that st- st- um, stuck with me over time was that when we see clutter, it tells, our our brains recognize it as, okay, that like your work isn't done. There's more to do. And so I always use this with my students. I say, imagine you sit on the couch, you've had a really long day with the kids, virtual school, trying to work from home, cooking dinner, cleaning up, right? You finally get to sit on the couch, just take a deep sigh and you just, oh my gosh, I got to get to kick my feet up. Now imagine your partner comes in the living room and says, what are you doing? What are you doing sitting down? There is more work to do. Like get up. Look at all look at this mess. Look at this mess in the house. Like this is what clutter is like telling our subconscious mind, right? And so what's that going to do? Like you're probably going to be pretty upset with your partner if they were to do that. But clutter, I think unknowingly to a lot of us does that exact same thing. And yeah. so again, raising stress levels, uh it just uh yeah, there's so much. Yeah, yeah. So it gives us the stress levels. It also is like you know, it raises the stress levels of our kids. That's really interesting. Mm-hmm. Of course, like the brain is, is clutter as unfinished work. That makes mm-hmm. a lot of sense. It, it, it actually, it feels very analogous to me of like the idea of rushing. You know, we talk about, um, you know, when whenever we're just kind of like in a hurry to get, if we're hurrying at all in any way, shape or form, our nervous system and our brain registers it as, as a threat, as stress, because the only reason you know, a human animal (laughs) would have a reason to hurry must be mean there's something threatening, right? Mm -hmm. So it's that same elevated cortisol stress levels, et cetera. So like hurrying feels very similar to like that, that clutter. So it's, so it's adding stress to our lives. So also like our stuff is like, it's work right? Like, I mean, I know I have, I have to fold all that laundry. Like I'm folding all that underwear now. Well, it sounds like at least, you know, whatever you picked up from her book and are sticking with that, I think for a lot of people, it becomes kind of like this therapeutic process and yeah. like it promotes that routine and kind of comfort that, gosh, we all need a little more comfort. So if that means you enjoy folding your underwear now, like God bless you, keep doing it, right? Like, that's great. Yeah. I, I enjoy the I enjoy the end product of it. Although I did, I'm trying to like, um, it's interesting because we talk about mindful activities, obviously here on the Mindful Mama podcast. And but one of the things that a lot of us podcast listeners do, I'm, I'm, look, I'm looking at you, dear listener, is that we've listened to the, our, the podcast while we're like folding laundry. Like I yes. listen to podcasts. So now my kids listen to podcasts while they fold their laundry or they don't fold their laundry. They just put it away. But um yeah, so I, I'm trying to at times, like a couple times a month, make it like just more of a like a mindful focusing my attention fully on folding the laundry activity. So n- next go. time, next time I'm all in on that. But let's talk about the work that all our stuff brings. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned for more Mindful Mama podcast right after this break. Parents who homeschool or want to homeschool. Are you overwhelmed with all the work and responsibilities on your shoulders right now? 
And for the parents with kids in school, have you avoided the need to pull your student out of public school system because it just seems too daunting to homeschool them yourself? Well, Homeschool Magnet is for parents just like you. Homeschool Magnet supports homeschooling families by providing students with instruction from world-class credentialed teachers in a remote classroom with their peers. Parents choose the best teachers for each student based on values and teaching approach to ensure every child is receiving exactly the education they desire. This puts you, the parent, in full control of your child's education without the daily responsibilities of lesson planning, pre-learning, teaching, tutoring, and grading. Each student will receive instruction in the four core subject areas of math, English language arts, science, and social studies. Parents ultimately have the freedom to involve their student in as much or as little learning as they prefer based on each student's learning goals. Other online schools exist, but Homeschool Magnet is unique. Even though Homeschool Magnet includes a robust online learning environment, each student works from real physical learning materials guided by video instruction from their teachers. This approach is similar to most remote college learning formats and will help prepare students for secondary school. Every student has daily access to their teachers who know their learning needs and can help with instruction and tutoring. Homeschool Magnet even gives your students the opportunity to join group video tutoring calls and homeroom style group video calls for fun and socialization with friends. With Homeschool Magnet, you get the freedom and control of homeschooling without the burden. Homeschool Magnet is only a fraction of the cost of private schools and the 30-day money-back guarantee upon enrollment means this choice is totally risk-free. Plus, enrollment and tuition are on a per semester basis, so you're only committing for a short period of time, giving you even more flexibility to control and shape your child's education. To learn more about Homeschool Magnet's student experience, go to homeschoolmagnet.com and join the growing waitlist. That's homeschoolmagnet.com. Um, so, what, you know, I mean, we have to like what store it we have to have you know put it all away like the, the, these are just some of the things that we have to like yes. take into account we have to acknowledge that the stuff brings work yeah that's the thing and that's something it's again all these realizations i had post decluttering was i was like you know i kept my shopping habits not really understanding after i decluttered like hardcore that these were lending a helping hand to having a stressful life, right? Because in the moment, it's like, oh gosh, I could really use this or I'll really I'll love this or my life will be so much easier when I have X, Y, Z from Amazon. Um, but it's really much more beyond paying for our stuff. Like we pay for our stuff in so many other ways beyond just like the credit card transaction. Um, you know, we pay for it with our time. We have to store it. We have to pick it up. We pay for it with our physical space. Obviously, you know, you have that four by four space, um, in your home, but a lot of us, um, have bigger homes, like you said, especially in, um, especially in America. And so that gives us, I guess, a lot more leeway to open up, you know, kind of cheat the system a little bit, right? So many people just are like, oh, I need a bigger house, right? That's going to solve my stuff problem. And then we're human by nature. We want to fill up space with stuff. And so, gosh, if you think about it, I think on average it costs uh, 10 bucks per square foot to store things in your home. So if you are storing this stuff, you're literally paying rent, <laughs> you know, just to store the stuff that's probably not going to get used for a long time. Um, you pay for it mentally. We've talked a lot about that. You know, it takes up headspace, it drains your energy. Um, and ultimately at the end of the day, like we have to handle our stuff at some point. At some point we have to. And then the emotional price, you know, stress, resentment, uh, gosh, overwhelm, frustration, anger, guilt, like all these different um, emotional uh, consequences from just bringing in and surrounding ourselves with stuff, which in the beginning, it's like, this is going to bring me happiness, right? But um, I realized after a while, it wasn't, wasn't, wasn't the case. And kind of the societal version of happiness or description of happiness and contentment, this more and more and more, it just wasn't working um, for my life anymore. Amen, sister. All right. Dear listener, you have all the inspo you need. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, oh, one more thing to inspire. And I hope this really inspired me. 
the National Soap and, and Detergent Association, which I didn't know was a real thing, but they are. I was like, well, okay, there's an association for soap and detergent. Okay. They did a study years back that said by that um, suggested by decluttering your home, you can save up to 40% of your time each week in just everyday household chores. And if you think about it, most of the time when we're like handling the mess and the stuff in our house where we have like what I call the expected mess. Um, this is like, you know, the expected mess from normal everyday living, right? Your kids get home from school, they dump their lunch boxes, their shoes, like everything gets put back your beautiful kitchen. That was just pristine clean. Your clean countertops now have stuff on them. Like that's a completely normal part of life just because I've simplified and minimalized doesn't mean my house never gets messy. So I'm kind of just squashing that myth right now. <laughs> Um, Thank you. But yeah, yes, it's okay. It's okay to have a mess. And in fact, I encourage mess in my house in some capacity because a lots of mess, uh, mess um, is a byproduct of play and connection, yeah. right? Um, and just doing really wonderful things with our families to promote a lot of those uh, values that I'm sure a lot of your listeners probably share. Um, but anyway, I, I recognized that I was battling expected mess, which is kind of hard enough on its own some days, right? Just everyday yes. living plus the clutter on top of it. And so um, if you can kind of just at least start crunching out and getting rid of and letting go of some of that clutter, it's going to make your normal everyday chores so much easier and faster. And 40%, that's, I would say for most of us between two to six hours, we're saving um, by simply decluttering our home. So gosh, if that isn't motivation, I don't know what it is. It's like, what would you do with an extra two, three, four, five, six hours a week? What would you do with that time, right? Would you invest in exercise, do a yoga class, whatever, like mm. spend more time with your kids, just take time for yourself, sit on the couch and relax, sleep. I don't know, whatever that is. So I think it's really cool for all the parents listening out there to kind of imagine that life that they want. Like, what will my home look like? What will my life look like when it's uncluttered? How will I feel when I wake up every day? Gosh, I'm going to feel so much more energized and excited to tackle the day. And I'm going to have more energy to play with my kids because right now I'm freaking tired at the end of the day or, you know, whatever that is, or I'm going to have more money to, um, you know, take our family on trips instead of, you know, spending thousands of dollars for the holidays on all this stuff that becomes clutter and my kids never play with, right? There are so many ways um, that it can play out so beautifully um, in the long run. This is so awesome. Okay. So we're, we're decluttering for the new year. Um, Katie, maybe we can wrap, wrap up and you share, you could share some of, we, we talked about maybe starting with some of the mm -hmm. places you you enjoy the most, you spend a lot of time with. We talked about toys. Maybe we can wrap up with some of the unexpected items that make a home feel more cluttered that we can, we can just like, you can help us identify that we can go in and get rid of right away. Yeah. I think, I think the obvious places would be, you know, countertops. Countertops are a big thing. That's why that's one of the first things we tackle in my 14 day challenge. Um, paperwork and mail, um, just focusing on getting in um, really solid organizational flow, especially in that transitional like entryway um, into your home. Um, can be such a huge blessing. Um, shoes on the floor. Um, if you don't have like a shoe bench or, you know, a specific spot and space to house a lot of this stuff, then that's probably why it ends up all over your house and your countertops. So again, kind of taking yourself back and looking at your home from a very objective lens. Like if you were to walk in your home as a guest and be like, oh, yeah, this room makes me feel stressed out or gosh, yeah, you know, if I had a mailbox sorter right here, that would probably mean that I wouldn't put all this mail on the counter. Um, and just being able to, again, without judgment, without shame, go here, how can I improve my kind of organizational systems in my house? Um, other things that cause or that can kind of make your home feel cluttered, even though it might not be, um, excess home decor. Boy, I've had so many people show me before and after pictures of like, kind of like their prized space in their house. Like, here's where I keep my home decor. And they always end up tackling it. I don't tell them to. And they, they're like, I didn't even know this was stressing me out. <laughs> I didn't even uh -huh. know these, you know, items I picked up at TJ Maxx for the holidays were like making me feel cluttered. But now that I got rid of half of them, this is, this is awesome. Um, pet toys on the floor, I know can kind of add up for a lot of people and like dog bones and things like that. Uh, stuff on your, on the front of your fridge. 
I love having pictures of, you know, a couple pictures on my fridge, but if there's like a lot on there, it's just, again, it's something you see every day. And if you see that visual clutter and it recognizes to your brain, like, ah, more work to do. I don't know if it's worth it, right? <laughs> Maybe tuck it away somewhere where um, it's not right in front of your face. And then a, a, one thing, one thing kind of wrapping up here that a lot of people don't think about is like furniture, like furniture that might just be too big for the space or maybe even just rearranging it a little bit more to open, open up the floor so you can see more of the floor. Little tweaks like that can make a big, big difference. Mm, yeah. I love these. I love these, Katie. We have a space in my house that we have a big open wall and I have like a big five foot painting on it. And it's mm. so funny because my, my, <laughs> My poor mother-in-law, Faye, if you listen to this, I love you. I'm not picking on you. <laughs> she's like, she's, you know, people, people have suggested, oh, you could put a piece of furniture in this, in this space or a yeah. rug in this space. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, it's open wood and it's just big open wall. And I, we love that space. Love it. Like it just, I love how it just creates space in our house like it's just this and it becomes a yoga space or whatever all kinds yeah. of you know the dog plays there and then my daughter made a big project and the project is like happening there you know that kind of thing but I love these Katie this is so wonderful I so appreciate you coming on and uh the 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 inspiration to help us like get rid of the excess so we can focus on what's actually important in our lives. I, I just always find that so inspiring. And before I came to talk, talk to you today, I was like getting dressed and I was like, in my closet, I was like, I don't need this shirt. I don't love it anymore. <laughs> and I don't need this one either. <laughs> so it's like always helps me personally, selfishly. I appreciate that. Um, where can people find, uh, I imagine the 14 day declutter challenge is a great place for them to start. Where can they oh. find out about that? Yeah. So if you're on Instagram, that's in my Instagram, a little link on top of my profile there, or you can go to my website, katiejoywells.com forward slash clutter crusher challenge. My, my most successful students um, start in the challenge. Typically it's just a great place to start um, and gain some momentum. And again, I talked about earlier, no matter what change you want to make in life, if you can do it with accountability and, a, you know, support from, other people, other like-minded people. It's just, it's a really beautiful thing. And so that's why it's really cool that I do these live. So they're not just like recordings you get because the energy from the group is outstanding and people just go like gung ho <laughs> inside this challenge. It's just, it's really inspiring. Awesome. All right. So check that out. That's really wonderful. Thank you for coming on the Mindful Mama podcast and for everything you're doing to help us to have more, more peace and sanity in your life. And of course, it re remind people about your podcast because we, this is a podcast listener. We, yes, we, <laughs> the podcast world here. That's right. I love it. It's not often I uh, get to be on with another podcaster. I'm usually the one interviewing. So it's a treat yeah. to be, uh, to be asked <laughs> questions, <laughs> but they can find on my podcast. Uh, it's called the maximized minimalist. The maximized Min minimalist. So go check that out. Um, thanks so much, Katie. Thank you, Hunter. I hope this episode has been inspiring for you. It really inspired me to do some simplifying and getting rid of stuff. We gave bags of old clothes to some friends who needed them and that felt really good. So um, I hope it has inspired you too and we can be productive in our time when we're not going to uh, parties and and gathering of family and all that this year. Oi, oi, oi. I hope you're you're hanging in there, my friend. I mean, this is not an easy time. So if you need some tips for how to cope with this time, please listen to episode 254, the last episode with Anna Seawald, the way we talk about coping with 2020. And, uh, and there's a really nice guided meditation there to help you envision your positive future. It was really helpful for me to do that. And the other things I've been doing is really just focusing on positive things that I can control, right? Like not diving into a lot of the like super negative news that I can't control. So anyway, just some ideas. I'm so grateful that you're here to listen. Uh, without you, this wouldn't be what it is. So thank you so, so very much. 
I, I really appreciate your support. I really appreciate you sharing the podcast and letting me know what you think. As always, like get a, take a screenshot of what you're listening to and then tag me at Mindful Mama Mentor so I can see what your takeaways are. I would love to see what you're decluttering. I think that would be great. And um, I'm just wishing you well. I'm wishing you peace and joy and happiness and serenity as we go through this winter. Maybe maybe you're on the opposite side of the world and it's not winter for you, but you know, wherever you are with the pandemic, just like I'm wishing you some serenity to accept and uh, focus on appreciating what you can. Me too, I will be too. (laughs) I can't wait to be back in your ears next week. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time and your attention. And I appreciate you. Take care, my friend. Namaste. I say definitely do it. It's really helpful. It will change your relationship with your kids for the better. It will help you communicate better. And just, I'd say communicate better as a person, as a wife, as a spouse. It's been really a positive influence in our lives. So definitely do it. I'd say definitely do it. It's so worth it. The money really is inconsequential when you get so much benefit from being a better parent to your children and feeling like you're connecting more with them and not feeling like you're yelling all the time or you're like, why isn't things working? I would say definitely do it. It's so, so worth it. It'll change you. No matter what age someone's child is, it's a great opportunity for personal growth and it's a great investment in someone's family. I'm very thankful I have this. You can continue in your old habits that aren't working or you can learn some new tools and gain some perspective to shift everything in your parenting. Are you frustrated by parenting? Do you listen to the experts and try all the tips and strategies, but you're just not seeing the results that you want? Or are you lost as to where to start? Does it all seem so overwhelming with too much to learn? Are you yearning for a community of people who get it, who also don't want to threaten and punish to create cooperation? Hi, I'm Hunter Clark Fields, and if you answered yes to any of these questions, I want you to seriously consider the Mindful Parenting membership. You'll be joining hundreds of members who have discovered the path of mindful parenting and now have confidence and clarity in their parenting. This isn't just another parenting class. This is an opportunity to really discover your unique, lasting relationship, not only with your children, but with yourself. It will translate into lasting, connected relationships, not only with your children, but your partner too. Let me change your life. Go to mindfulparentingcourse.com to add your name to the wait list so you will be the first to be notified when I open the membership for enrollment. I look forward to seeing you on the inside. mindfulparentingcourse.com